the road to the Kentucky Derby continues to heat up and there were three races this past weekend that all were significant and had points on the line towards getting into the Derby and I wanted to discuss them now. This coming weekend there are two uh, races in the Road to the Derby. Um, I'm not going to discuss them in this video. This is going to be more of a look back at the three. But those are um, important to keep an eye out for. So all three races I thought were really interesting. Uh, were fun to watch. If you didn't get a chance, try to check out the replay. Um, I... I thought that the uh, San Felipe was probably the one that generated the, mo the most uh, interest or the most discussion. So I am going to discuss that one first. Um, the three races were the Gotham, which is held which was at the Aqueduct, Aqueduct uh, racetrack in New York. And then there was the Tampa Bay Derby down in Florida. And then the San Felipe in California. So that's one thing I discussed last, last week. That the, in terms of geography, it was spread out. That, that was pretty cool. So anyway, the San Felipe, if you haven't heard about it, it featured two of the leading contenders, at least going into the race, um, Boltoro and McKenzie. Boltoro was the one of the top two-year-olds, but he finished third in the um, Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Uh, McKenzie, trained by Bob Affert, is um, definitely one of a pose that a lot of people like, of course. Um, so this was kind of like a showdown of sorts, you know, and it, I, for me, I put less into the head to head matchup than I just wanted to see each horse and how they did, you know, for themselves because McKinsey didn't have that much experience and Boltoro was coming off that not only was he coming off a little bit of the disappointing effort in the juvenile, but then he also had injuries earlier this year. So there was really a question mark how he was in a run. In terms of how the race played out, it was an incredibly exciting race. Um, both Boltoro and McKenzie ran well. They were both, they were kind of basically tied neck and neck, if you will, um, in the stretch run. And there were, I'm not going to discuss any other horse in this race. That's not to say that none of them, uh, can't rebound and make a push, but most of them I thought were a little bit further back. It really turned into a two-horse race down the stretch. Um, so what happened was McKinsey won the race, finished first, but there was a steward's inquiry as to if there was contact initiated by the a horse into another horse, which it can impact, which impact if it impacted the outcome of the race. And after a steward's inquiry that I think lasted about, about I'd say at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Not that that's a problem because you, you know, it's important to get it right. But it was determined that McKinsey impeded Boltoro. So although McKinsey finished first and Boltoro second, again, razor thin, um, it was switched. McKinsey was disqualified. So Boltoro wound up technically winning the race and McKinsey finishing second. It's important to note that although the terminology is used is that McKinsey was disqualified, he still finished second in terms of the, you know, chart. And, but maybe most importantly is that he, um, still received the second place points in terms of the road to the Derby. Um, because if he didn't receive those points then he'd still probably get into the race, but then, he'd be under a lot of pressure in terms of having to perform well in his next race. But let's kind of talk about the... There's a lot to talk about here because there was a disqualification, the steward's inquiry, and it actually had the race itself. I personally thought that I was impressed by both horses, actually. Um, I thought Boltoro ran great. Um, he was right up there for about the first three quarters of the race, about... And then when he needed to, he turned it on. He was never really able to pass McKinsey in any significant way. And again, we can debate whether that was because of the contact. Um, but I thought maybe for, you know, there was like a second there where he did take the lead. 
you'd have to go back and see for yourself if you think that. Um, but again, I thought he ran great, whether he finished first or second. I thought if anyone had doubts about him, I think they probably went away and he's firmly in the top, I'd say three at least right now in the terms of rank, if you're doing like a ranking for the Derby. Um, he's probably number one for a lot of people. And again, you know, he finished, he was the second horse to cross the finish line. So in that respect, you know, it. I can understand someone say, well, how can you rate him as the top three-year-old right now heading into the Derby if he didn't win his race? But at the same time, you know, you have to look. McKenzie's a great horse, which I'll get to in a second. And for both the Royal Gang, coming off of a pretty long layoff, and especially off of an injury and the poor, poor, relatively poor performance last time out, it was important for him to run that well and I think when you combine his performance it'd be one thing if this was his first performance like if he was a horse where this was his first major race and he ran that then maybe there'd be some question marks but for him to do this on the back of what he did as a two-year-old I think that's where people are saying okay yeah he's the top three-year-old right now or at least second or third from McKinsey's perspective, I, again, if that maybe there's some mixed opinion about him, but if you liked him coming in, you're just going to like him that much more after this. Um, again, you know, he finished first. He got those points for finishing second uh, in, in terms of how it was determined. And I think he'll probably run in one, one more time before the Derby. Um, well, I, it hasn't been a announced what that race will be but you know I def I think it's fair to say he ran a great race and he'll you know I don't know if he's like the top contender or top three but he's right up there and it will be important to see where he goes next and runs in terms of I do want to just discuss that disqualification I thought I probably to be honest I probably agreed with it because I did think that Boltoro was trying to make his move and McKinsey was shifting to the right a little bit and but at the same time I can absolutely understand people that say it was unfair because Boltoro did hit McKinsey a little bit uh a few seconds before that and some people said they kind of washed each other out and you know that is fair to say I thought Javier Castellano, the jockey for Boltoro in this race, gave a great explanation of why, he, you know, of what he was experiencing, which is he said that basically to summarize, um, he Boltoro wanted to make his move and have kind of two horses just go straight ahead in the stretch run and and basically let the best horse win. But when Boltoro tried to do that, when McKinsey came over. It kind of intimidated both Doro a little bit, and a horse can think, "Well, when I go, I get slammed a little bit, so I'm just I'm just gonna hang side by side with him." And that's a fair explanation, I think, and I think that's probably the biggest one that led to the stewards' inquiry. I think this is probably a case where, if you're either the trainer for one of the two horses, or if you were rooting for one, maybe if you had wager on this race or if you're just a fan of one of the horses you probably you'll side with either one it was really close and you know it's it's a difficult decision and um it, it's complicated in respects because there's a lot riding on it and i can understand why some people would be upset um but at the same time, it's the steward's job to make difficult calls, and um, it's difficult. Um, okay, so that was the San Felipe. Great race. I hope it's not overshadowed by the um, disqualification, but well done to both Bolt Doro and McKinsey for putting on a really nice race. And again, you know, maybe let's not totally write off the... Write off the um, 
third and fourth finishers in that race or any of the others because they were facing, you know, two great horses. And if they come back and run great, you know, they can still get into the Derby. So I'm not going to mention them here, but uh, certainly they shouldn't be forgotten. So now I'm going to move on. I'll let I'll do the Tampa Bay Derby next and finish with the Gotham. And I'll do these relatively quick. So the Tampa Bay Derby was won, won by Quip, who kind of came out of nowhere a little bit. He finished 7th in the K Kentucky Jockey Club. Which if you look at that race and uh, some of the horses that ran in there and how they've done it. It's looking like a pretty nice race. Again, finishing 7th, um, you know, doesn't matter how good it is. It's still not a great performance. But um, in this race, he ran awesome. And this was a pretty nice field, actually. Decent field. So well done to Quip. He earned those 50 points. And he'll probably be into the Derby if that's what his team wants. So he's an important horse to um, keep an eye on. Second was Flame Away, trained by Mark Cassie. And this was a horse that in his last time won the Sam F. Davis, which I thought was a really good field, actually. Um, so if you were a little unsure about Flame Away, finishing second here, that's not bad. So I think Flame Away is a horse that we should probably keep keep an eye out um and i think he's becoming a serious contender for the derby at this point um one horse i did want to mention finishing fourth was vino rosso who um in his last race was third but was an impressive third but for him to finish fourth year it was i'd say it was really disappointing he did not run great he didn't run terrible but not good so he'll probably i don't know maybe i don't know if there's time to run for him to run twice, so probably just once more, and he'll have to have a great performance again to the Derby and be a contender. Um, so this was a little, I was looking for more here from Vino Rosso, but at the same time, well done to Quip, and again that's 50 points right there. And then Flame Away again. Okay, yeah, he finished second, but he had another win earlier on, like I just mentioned in the Sam F. Davis. So I'm pretty sure he'll have enough points to be in at this point. And that's a just a great job. And again, trade by Mark Cassie, which is interesting because Mark Cassie had Classic Empire last year, um, who was one of the um, most well-known and most talented three-year-olds last year. Okay, let's move on to the Gotham now. Um, Enticed won this race, trained by Karen McLaughlin. And Enticed is kind of a horse that's run a lot. Um... So this this was a huge performance, I thought. Um, and again, this was another 50-pointer. And um, I'll mention it here. It's kind of becoming a trend maybe this year where if you win, you know, maybe you can come out of nowhere a little. Well, not that Entice came out of nowhere, but you don't have to be a favorite or a well-known contender, but if you run in one of these 50-point races and you win, you're basically in the Derby if you want. And so that's why these races are important to watch um, and pay attention to. Second here was Old Time Revival. And then two horses that I'll mention that are well-known and finished third and fourth in this race. So third was Free Drop Billy and fourth was Frenzy Fire. Uh, these are horses that have run a lot. And maybe earlier on were uh, pe popular contenders. And maybe they still are because I'm pretty sure they, they'll they both have enough points to be in the Derby. They're, I think they're right now, they're still they're both in the top 10. The interesting thing with them is, I to be honest, I don't think right now they're serious contenders to win. Uh, I, you know, again, I hate to say that because it can be unfair. You know, you get into the starting gate on Derby Day and anything can happen. But just realistically, if you look at their last couple of performances, I just don't think they'll have quite enough talent or speed to win the Derby. But they're both really tough horses, and they both... I think that the, they'll both on Derby Day have the distance to get a mile and a quarter. And it just seems to me like they both... They both have a lot of heart, and they'll 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 run and run hard and maybe they yeah they won't have the speed to win but what i was going to say was if you're looking and again it's early to discuss specific bets for the derby but if you're looking at a horse that can maybe sneak into the 
trifecta or if you do a superfecta. I definitely think Free Drop Building and Frenzy Fire would be contenders for those type of bets. You know, a lot of times on Derby Day, you see like a horse who's 20 to 1 or whatever, 25 to 1 going into the race. And then all of a sudden they finish third and you're like, wow, you know, maybe you didn't see that one coming. I think these horse, these are two examples of horses that can do that. Um, and the funny thing was like, I thought I was watching them a little bit during the race and they were like right next to each other for large portions of the race. It was kind of funny. So I don't know if I like one more than the other. Um, uh, but they'll still, like I said, they'll both almost definitely have enough points to get in the Derby. And they could be, again, maybe not serious contenders to win, but potentially to finish third or fourth. Again, I, but mo the, the story coming out of the Gotham is in Tice, let's be clear, to win, trained by Karen McLaughlin, and he uh, bucks his spot in the Derby if they want that. So those were three big races. Uh, two more coming up this weekend. And then I think the weekend of March 24th is the Louisiana Derby. And the following weekend is the Florida Derby. And then we're in April. And then, um, and again, even though uh, obviously you might think that when April comes, that's right before the Derby. But keep in mind, the two to three week that stretch right before the Derby, those horses aren't going to be running because, you know, that's not enough rest between the final prep to the derby. You'd have to have at least, I'd say, three weeks, two with the um, very least. And especially if, you know, it, if think about this. If you're a contender to win the derby, then you don't want to win the triple crown. So you're going to run a one in the Preakness. So then you'd be running in your last prep, then the derby then the preakness and the belmont three weeks after the preakness if that was the um course that you took so that's why um it's you know right now it's important to um these races going on because there has to be that layoff time before the derby so thanks for this video i hope you enjoyed the races and keep an eye out for the uh ones coming up